Hi friends, myself is Dr. M. Madhiyarasan, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Bharat Institute of Engineering and Technology, Hyderabad. So in our previous video, we have discussed about the speed control mechanism of DC drives as well as the AC drives. So in that AC drive, the induction motor speed can be controlled with respect to the stator side as well as rotor side. By varying the stator side and the rotor side parameters, we will achieve the speed control of induction motor. So with respect to the stator side control, so what we are doing, so we will vary the frequency as well as the stator voltages with respect to the voltage source inverters or current source inverters or cyclo converters. So the, these converters such as VSI, voltage source inverters, current source inverters, CSI and cyclo converters, the purpose is to achieve the variable frequency as well as variable stator voltage. Because if you are varying the stator voltage and we are varying the stator frequency, we will achieve the speed control of induction motor with respect to the stator side. So the ultimate aim of VSI, CSI and cyclo converter fed induction motor is to achieve the variable frequency as well as variable stator voltage or making the V by F ratio as a constant. So, to achieve the variable frequency, variable state R voltage and V by F ratio as a constant, so we are using VSI, CSI, cyclo converters. So, with the help of VSI, CSI, cyclo converters, we will achieve the speed control of induction motor. So, by varying the firing angle of the voltage source inverters or current source inverters or cyclo converters, the preference frequency of the induction motors will be varying. So based on that reference frequency, the induction motor speed will be varying. So the thing is, we will sense this induction motor speed and based on the speed error, the reference frequency will be set with the help of controllers and based on that reference frequency, the appropriate firing angles of the thyristors or any switching devices in the VSI or CSI or cyclo controllers will be given and based on that firing angle, the induction motor will run at the variable frequency, variable stator voltage and V by F ratio. So we will achieve the desired speed. So this thing is, happens in a closed loop control system. So we will sense the speed and based on the speed error, whether it is positive speed error or it is negative speed error, the reference frequency will be set with the help of controller and based on that reference frequency, the appropriate firing angle of this inverter will be given and based on that appropriate firing angle, the variable frequency, variable stator voltage will be achieved to the induction motor. So, with the help of VSI, CSI and cyclo converters, we will vary the frequency. So once my frequency and stator voltage will be varied, automatically my speed of the induction motors will be in a controlled manner. So today we have to discuss about what is the difference that is comparison between the voltage source inverters as well as the current source inverters. So the general difference between the voltage source inverters and the current source inverters is Seeing the circuit diagram itself, we will identify whether this is the voltage source inverter or in a current source inverter. Because in the current source inverter, we are having the input inductance. But in the voltage source inverter, we are not having any input inductance. So because of this input inductance, the circuit will be protected. So no need of any extra fuse or switching devices is required for current source inverters. But in the voltage source inverters, there is no input side inductance. So that's why we require some fuse or any devices, protecting devices to protect the device from the high current or high fault. Means we have to protect the devices with the help of fuse. So second is, by seeing the circuit diagrams, in the current source inverters, we are having the capacitors. So what is the purpose of capacitors in current source inverter is the capacitors will be taking care of the commutation. So that's why the commutation failures not happen in current source inverters. But in that 
voltage source inverters we are not having any capacitors so that's why there will be a commutation failure in the voltage source inverters and we know that that is current source inverters the name itself indicated the input current is maintaining as a constant the output voltage magnitude is dependent on load but the output current magnitude is independent on load so this is with respect to the current source inverters and when we are talking about the voltage source inverters so based on that uh, that is name itself implies us we are making the input voltage as a constant and output voltage magnitude is independent on load and output current magnitude is dependent on load so this is about the second difference between the voltage source inverters as well as the current source inverters and third difference is in current source inverters the regenerative breaking is naturally possible but in voltage source inverters the regenerative breaking is not naturally possible so difference is regenerative breaking is naturally possible in current source inverters but the regenerative breaking is not naturally possible for voltage source inverters and next difference is in the current source inverters we can if, if any supply is failing so the dynamic breaking is not possible in current source inverters so the dynamic breaking is not possible if supply fail but in the voltage source inverters if supply is fails the dynamic breaking can be possible so next to difference between the vsi and csi is the current source inverters is not suitable for the multi motor drive applications so we can't use the current source inverters for multi motor drive operation but the voltage source inverters is suitable for multi motor drive operations and the next difference is the current source inverters so because of that uh, capacitors and inductance it is bulky and costly but the current voltage source inverters is cost effective and less bulky compared to the csi and the next comparison is see if the two devices is connected from the same leg means see if the two devices is connected from the same devices means what happens so there will be a causes there will be a uh, occurrence of commutation failure so these can be taken care by capacitors so that's why in current source inverters there is no commutation failure so no commutation failure 
so the commutation failures can be taken care by the capacitors so the commutation of the thyristors each thyristors will be taken care of with the respect to the capacitors that's why in current source inverters there is no problem with respect to the commutation failure but in the ot source inverters there will be a occurrence of commutation failure and the next difference is the performance so whenever we are talking about the performance the current source inverters have the slow performance so the performance is slow but in the voltage source inverters if you are using the pulse width modulation inverter that is vsi means the performance is dynamic performance so we will achieve the dynamic performance with respect to the pwm scheme based vsi so if you are using the six, six step inverters means the performance is poorer than the vsi dynamic performance if you are using pwm inverter so if you are using six step inverter means performance is slow compared to the psi so next difference is frequency range is limited for current source inverter but the frequency range is wide that is wide range of frequency for voltage source inverters so no need of extra protecting devices so this is the general comparison between the voltage source inverters and current source inverter so by seeing the diagram itself we can identify whether that is the voltage source inverters or current source inverters so in the current source inverters in the input set we are having the inductance and the capacitors also we are having the capacitors will be taking care of the commutation failure of the thyristors so that's why in the current source inverters the commutation failures can't happen in current source inverters but in the voltage source inverters we are not having any input side inductance as well as the capacitors so that's why it requires some fuses that is protecting devices and as well as commutation failure can be happen and we as we know that the csi is a input current we are keeping as a constant and the output voltage magnitude is completely dependent on load but output current magnitude is independent on load with respect to the voltage source inverters the input voltage we are kept as a constant and the output voltage magnitude is independent on load but the output current magnitude is dependent on load the next difference is the current source inverter is uh, naturally we are having the regenerative braking possibilities but in voltage source inverters the regenerative braking is not possible by naturally so if supply fails in the current source inverters mean 
the dynamic braking is not possible so we need some extra devices for achieving the dynamic braking but in the ot source inverters if supply fails means automatically the dynamic brake braking will be possible the next thing comparison is the uh, current source inverters we need separate devices for the variable operation so that's why the current source inverters is not suitable for the multi motor drive application but in the ot source inverters the single devices used for the variable purposes so that's why so it can be used for the multi motor drive application the next comparison is so because of the inductance and the capacitance the current source inverter is costlier and it is bulky in size but in the ot source inverters we are not having capacitance as well as inductance so that's why it is less costly compared to the current source inverters and also less bulky compared to the current source inverters the next comparison is so as we discussed earlier uh, earlier so the capacitance will taking care of the commutation so that's why so no commutation failures happens in current source inverters but in the ot source inverters we are not having any capacitance will taking care of the commutation problem so that's why there is a possibility of commutation failures so in order to overcome the commutation failures we need some any, any protecting devices such as fuse or anything for reducing the high current from the damaging of the devices but here we are not requiring any protecting devices because that inductance will be taking care of the protection of device from the high current or high voltages the next thing is with respect to the performance the csi having the slow performance but in the vsi if you are using the pulse width modulation scheme the performance is very fast that is dynamic performance we will achieve with respect to the pulse width modulation scheme based vsi so if you are using the six step inverter the performance is very poor compared to the current source inverters that is the performance is very slow compared to the current source inverters if you are using six step inverter based ot source inverter if you are using the pulse width modulation based inverter means we will achieve the dynamic performance the next comparison is the current source inverters having the frequency range is very limited and speed range also very limited but in the ot source inverters we can achieve the wide range of frequency so that's why we will achieve the wide range of speed control the next comparison is there is no as, as we already earlier discussed that is no need of any extra protecting devices for the current source inverters the input side inductance will be taking care of the high current uh, protection but in the ot source inverters we need some extra protecting devices such as fuse high rated fuses to protect the device from the high current so this is the comparison between ot source inverters and as well as the current source inverters so thank you